Hello fellow map makers and incarnates and whatever tools you might be using. <laughs> I'm personally working on incarnate right now obviously and uh, today we are doing another map assembly time lapse and talk. This is where I show a time lapse of a map I made for a recent game that I ran and just sort of talk about my process as I work through it, how I build these things and uh, my workflow, as well as how I'm going to use it in adventure and how I can sort of uh, rework the tools I've already made to make them again in the future. So, or use this map for some other means essentially. Basically how you can turn something that's very specific for one task and make it so that you can use it for more in the future. So specifically this map we're making right now is for a quest called uh, Simmering Sails or it's the first quest in the Cinder Cove trilogy. Uh, <clears throat> I am making a pirate ship right now, and this is actually the first time I even saw the pirate tools on Incarnate, right after they made an update. So, <laughs> if you see me taking some extra time to figure out how I want to put all these things down, it's because uh, I did not practice beforehand, I just recorded and got it done because I think I had maybe two or three hours before my quest was about to begin, so I had to get this set up in about an hour and a half, and then use the rest of that time to populate it with monster tokens and just get the scene ready for the players to be a part of it. So, <clears throat> here we go. The first section that you saw before with all the white lines, that was me just spacing everything out. Later on, I'll realize that, oh, I was super off on all that line work and my numbers got a little bit skewed because I was miscounting. It's very hard to do all the counting with this, but Incarnate recently updated so that their grid program works a lot better. Uh, right there, you're seeing me just uh, change the background and foreground using the digging tool there on the left. Uh, I always like to keep those things separate, obviously, uh, for multiple reasons. <laughs> but especially with something like a ship where it's a very distinct singular floor versus the sea and ocean background with very defined walls for the rim of the, of the ship, it's a good idea to use here very specifically and very hard, essentially. Uh, sometimes it's not the best option because putting two textures next to each other will still have a very thick line in between. So usually I like to cover that with some sort of object. And here on the ship, it just has lines. <laughs> this is the moment where I realize, oh, I can save myself a good 45 minutes by just using all these default ship models that they have in there. So thank you, Incarnate, very much for saving me an hour's worth of work and not having to make this. <laughs> now, if I had had the time, maybe I would have worked on a more unique ship, but every time I was building something on paper, it just never seemed to come out looking right. So here I am, now that I have these basic ship models, I want to get the water down on there so I can start to get you know, a visual feel for how I want this map to flow. There's three of the same boat because we've got the top section where the, or the crow's nest section at the top. That's where players up on high ground or maybe birds that come swooping down at them would be. Uh, obviously this center section is the deck of the boat itself. And then at the very bottom is the belly of the ship or the underside, which uh, can be climbed up onto, and we'll talk in a second. But right now, let me address this very strange fire I'm adding into the center of my ship. Uh, the entire quest surrounds uh, an island of fire newts who use these specialized ships to essentially collect the steam and fire that's constantly spewing off their body and is caught in a ship sail. And the ship sail is then prepared, propels the thing forward. But because the fire newts, you know, are clearly made of fire, they need to be inside of their volcanic and obsidian rock housing here in the center. So I'm kind of building what is essentially a small volcano on a wooden ship, which yes, is a horrible idea to do in real life, but here it's uh, it's fantasy, so we're having fun. Right there, you notice because I was using the ship stamp, uh, the rocks were going over it and I couldn't just lower their level to get underneath. So I just put a fresh set of stairs on top of it. Uh, there's no reason not to put the same object on top of a lower section of it if it's gonna help make your layering effect work. Uh, then we throw a uh, <clears throat> bit of the brush tool in there to get the lava looking like it's a lot higher and more pronounced in the center and that's just sort of spewing off to the sides of the ship. You can imagine that it's just hissing into the waters at all times. <clears throat> get a couple of sails in place. Remember to always make sure that there are masts underneath your sail or essentially a round wooden object to show that this enormous puffy wind that's catching this enormous puffy you know thing that's catching the wind isn't going to fly away and is actually attached to something. Plus, it makes it so that maybe your enemies have a target to fire at with a mast to take down your ship and immobilize you. See, those are the things that help when you're trying to design a set. Now here we got some supplies, again, a target that enemies could burn down, but also just something interesting to look at. But then I realized as I was making it, no one would have open face supplies just sitting out in the sea air because 
the salt and sea and foam and everything would just burn that shit to ash in seconds. So instead, we just turned it into something of a storage area. Now, I am a personal huge fan of One Piece, <laughs> so I, I wanted to throw a little bit of a garden on there. I also figured gardens should have been a little bit more commonplace on ships. Uh, I don't know the botany of it, but man, scurvy was such an issue back then and you just needed fresh vegetables and vitamin C, otherwise you just die painfully. So having these types of things would really have been a lifesaver back in the day. Plus, again, another target to have some people go after and kind of an interesting spot where players might have a chance to role play. In fact, in the game itself, one of my tabaxi characters feels much more comfortable sleeping on soil than in a bed, so they would sleep in there the entire time. It was just a fun little factor. And of course, that's me using the dirt tool to add a little bit of a messy look to the ship's deck. I know you're supposed to keep it scrubbed clean, but once you put a garden up there with all the dirt flying around the wind, you're going to have a bit of a mess. Now, right here, I'm just trying to find uh, the beginning of my downstairs section. Uh, for the most part, everything up top is pretty much good to go. So I got straight away to the interior. Here's me just sort of leveling everything out. and. I did it this time, at least for the lower decks. Uh, remember, I always suggest get a piece of paper, some grid paper, get some colored pencils, pay $2 at your local like Target, Walmart, Piggly Wiggly, whatever, and just get something so that you can make something visually interesting that you're doing by hand because it gives you a real sense of like purpose and like fulfillment even to make something that looks so interesting and dynamic so that when you go and start working on the map, you see the colors and what you were aiming for with furniture versus rewards and stuff, and it makes it easier to decide what kind of tokens you want to use in those places. And in general, it just makes it so you don't have to think about these things too often. So we've got cannons on the top deck, cannons on the bottom deck. Uh, I like to do that just because, again, it gives it could split up the party into two different sections. If like an evil crew was to get onto a lower level while everyone's up on deck, they could like knock the cannons out of there or make them fire into the ship. It gives you a lot of options, so it's just good to remember that the more you have to play around with in these maps, uh, the more your team and your adventures are going to be able to play around and have fun themselves. I had two teams go on this same exact adventure with very separate outcomes, so you can check out some of my other videos uh, on my channel for that if you want to watch a full game or at least the pitches for them, which are much shorter, I promise you. Uh, okay, so we've got some basic cabins here for the crew members. Just almost nothing. It's good to remember that these guys are really lucky if they didn't just get a set of 15 hammocks in a single section of the ship and people would just wake up, pee in the corner and go back to sleep. Seriously, being a pirate was a nightmare. <laughs> but keep it small, keep it simple. You're on a ship, you don't need much luxury or much storage. So we got a few places to stay and I decided to put a sort of mess hall area where people could have some fun. Uh, you see there's a ladder near where people are staying. That's uh, one way to get up the ship. The other section is going to be on the bottom left near the gambling. So again, more options and more ways that can be messed with. Uh, on the left there, I just set up a couple of extra beds. That's going to become a room in a few seconds. Just uh, It's good to have enough sleeping quarters for at least six people because adventuring parties are usually at least six. So always try to aim for that number when you're building housing in general. It just helps with immersion to think that nobody's forced to sleep like on the floor, you know? And then I added a little bit of a food section and table over there, just because I wanted that hallway to seem more interesting than an empty walking space. And then the section here on the right is where the captain's quarters are located. Now, this guy's the one in charge, so he gets the nice tablecloth on his table. He's got a fancy chair, a bunch of scrolls and maps and everything he's working on. It's well lit. He's got the nice bed, not the one that's just like a stack of wood and maybe some cloth. Uh, <clears throat> Down near the staircase are a couple of cannonballs. Again, cannonballs would normally be stored right next to uh, the cannons themselves, obviously, which is why we have these little uh, storage racks next to them. But you can put them in different barriers too for more intrigue, obviously. And especially since on a ship, it's good to limit them. So here I closed off the bedroom. You can see I'm creating another table just to add more options and more cover. And then I put a few curtains to block the doorway so that it feels more natural. Like these are actual different spaces instead of just an artificial wall being put there couple of torches, get your light sources in. Again, light sources should always be the last thing you start adding to these types of maps. Uh, no light sources on the deck because <clears throat> uh, most of the adventuring on the deck of a ship is going to happen during the day. Uh, you shouldn't be sleeping on your ship unless, you know, you're willing to take those risks and stuff, but and it's not worth it to put artificial looking lights up there. All right, and uh, that is where I stopped when I was making my pirate ship. There was nothing super crazy about this type of build, and uh, occasionally you'll notice there were a few skips due to recording errors, but 
for the most part, I really enjoyed making this one. Uh, I plan to make something more complex ship-wise in the future, and I also are going to be putting out a series of just smaller ships that I made that are just visually interesting but kind of nonsensical, so that you can have weird, wacky enemy encounters at sea. These maps are always, of course, much smaller, so that uh, you could just put multiple of them in there. Well, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this. Uh, you can check out one of the screens here if you would like to see the actual game where this map was used and played on. And as always, please like and subscribe because I want to uh, make that algorithm work my way. <laughs> uh, if you have any questions on Incarnate or how I did any of this, please put them in the comments below and I will respond. Have a good day, map makers.